Okay, everybody, this is class number two. We are closed, but FedEx is still running, so we are taking this opportunity to show you how we get the chrysalis in. So Sam is unpacking the box. Do you want to explain where this came from? Yes. Or, or how it came to be in our possession? Yes. This, you want to uh, do that? this is coming from one of our, um, our friends uh, up north that is closed. Um, and since um, they're a 501c3 and they have um, no one on staff, so that means that they uh, just don't get any more butterflies, don't tend to their butterfly stock, which is very sad. But here in Key West, um, we uh, take care of all of our inventory every day. So a lot of the butterfly conservatories around the United States have asked us to become a shelter and a safe haven for butterflies, and uh, we uh, say yes. So here is the list of some of the butterflies that is in this package. This one comes from a uh, distributor uh, down in uh, Costa Rica. Um, they did and... email this particular um, farmer, did call us yesterday and tell us that this will be our last shipment from them. They're still in full production because you know they're several months out with that, but they can't get any more airplanes. Costa Rica has told them no flights. So this will be our last shipment from them. From them, they're starting to um, starting to try to switch airlines around uh, from uh, the standard way that we ship to uh, air cargo. The only problem with air cargo is it's not treated like passenger planes, and it's a, it's a little bit more risky for the uh, for the butterfly stock. But inside okay, so this here, is really interesting, you guys. On the front, can you show them what they, they went ahead and put all the species here so we know what we're looking for in the box. So we have the scientific names here. We will go through all this on another um, class where we go through the scientific co and common names of the butterflies we carry. If you guys see any of this up here, these are all of the uh, chrysalis that came out of the windows. Most of you see here have hatched uh, correctly. Of course, there are some of them that uh, fail and uh, usually in nature, uh, less than 10% of the butterflies that are hatched um, or laid an egg make it to adulthood. So here in the conservatory, our, um, our odds are, are huge compared to nature. So um, of course, we'll show you here. You guys get to see up close and personal how this works. It is very cool. It is, this is amazing, you guys. See how they pack them all? You can see they're wiggling. Look, they're see, ready they're actually to alive. So they're alive and, um, and very healthy. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take them all out of this protective envelope and get them ready to hang. Isn't this awesome? This is how... Each one has its, it's so each one very has its little, different. Now, when I first started in the industry years and years ago, these were wrapped in toilet paper. So look how far we've come to the styrofoam with the individual little uh, areas for the uh, pupae. Um, Every trust, farmer. Trust me when I tell you, it is completely different than it was before. Because we used to get them like this, and they used to take them and wrap them up in toilet paper, and I had to unwrap them all. But this is... Uh, this is how far we've come in the industry. Every farmer has their own um, different way that they do it. This particular um, establishment, they're very, very organized. Everything is perfect like this. We do have some farmers in the Philippines that still send us stuff in kind of wads of toilet paper. But now in these times of global toilet paper hoarding, we probably won't get them yeah. in toilet paper. The nice thing about this farm as well is they sent us um, something to hang it on. A lot of the other farmers uh, don't, so we have to use our glue gun in order to uh, dab a little glue at the uh, base of the uh, chrysalis. And, uh, but this makes it so much easier for us to pin it up on the board uh, quickly. So I can make quick of 300 butterflies probably within an hour uh, because I don't have to do much work. But so we're just in a rush to get a lot of these out of the packages. Uh, and you can see that some of them uh, don't need as much um, uh, packing. Uh, packing, so they lay them like this for See, us. That's a hardy chrysalis that isn't so delicate. It was kind of just bulk.
This is one of those questions I get asked a lot, like, um, how do you maintain your population? And the answer is this. See, we can't have um, enough caterpillars to maintain our butterfly population because they eat 600 times their body weight every day. So we wouldn't have a beautiful garden. So we import them in the chrysalis stage already. We do um, breed our own a, a few just so we can show people the entire process of metamorphosis which we'll go through in a series of other classes with the egg and the caterpillar and the chrysalis and the butterfly. There's a lot in here. Because they were closing down operation and they knew we would be the last ones to get the shipment, they send us sent us a lot. So it's a little extra work for us, but we um, we're a little we have a soft spot. Uh, <laughs> we love what we do. Um, you know, without uh, educating you guys. Um, on how this all works, um, you know, it's really imperative that we keep these farmers in business. Um, this is uh, this is hard for us to have this tragedy worldwide. So, um, <laughs> Brett and Scarlett, Brett and Scarlett are, are knocking on the windows. They want attention. <laughs> all that knocking this whole time has been Brett saying, "I want in," but when they come in, they are so loud that we can't tell you guys anything. Look at this, you guys. I, this is one of my absolute favorites. Isn't that, maybe it doesn't show on the video. It's completely metallic. It, they're just, it's amazing. It, it's, this world is amazing. These beautiful eyes. Look at these, see they look like leaves. Wouldn't even notice that out in the world. Just looks like a dead thing. Camouflage, you guys. This is, uh, remember, less than 10% makes it to adulthood. So by blending in with their surroundings, um, they're kind of uh, saying, hey, uh, I'm not here. Uh, pass me by. Um, don't eat me. Don't eat me, please. Uh, and then we've got a lot of cocoons here as well. So we have a lot of work to do in the next, uh, in the next couple hours here. So what we're gonna do after he's done unpacking this whole box, um, each species gets pinned with its ID so we know which one it is. And they go up on these boards. Look at all these cocoons. Cocoons of some of our moths here. These are pretty easy. They, these usually don't hatch very quickly. So uh, we'll, we'll put these out. But, uh, those guys there's a lot these of guys little that were over here, here that we're taking care of. They'll come out soon. So then they each, some species have a very specific way that they have to get pinned in order to emerge properly. Others like these are pretty easy. But So they pin them all on the boards with their IDs and then we put them over here in these cabinets where you guys saw yesterday. We are required to keep them in these just in case there's something unwanted, you know, something from another country, a, a pest of some sort. So they're in here in a completely enclosed space. There's ventilation and there's sphagnum moss for humidity. And they stay here on their boards until it's time to emerge. And then if you backtrack to yesterday, you'll see what we do when they emerge and release them into the conservatory. Wow, these morphos, there's so many beautiful morphos. My favorite butterfly, one of my favorite butterflies. Isn't it amazing? Just beautiful. Mother Nature's awesome. Nature's just awesome. You guys, I got um, some of our farmers to send me some pictures and videos of what their operations look like in other countries. So I'll put those up later today. It's really unglamorous. <laughs> yes. And ama but amazing. Amazing. And you know? it's hard work. Anyone who works in agriculture knows that's not an easy life. It is so beautiful when some of these people who have less than everybody else care more 
about something that we don't care much about. But this is their livelihood and this is their whole life. And, and taking care of the land, developing the land, living off the land is the way it's been for what, thousands and thousands of years. And then we come along and sort of disrupt things. But then you have people like this who care about what they do and don't have any, don't have much in the way of uh, money. They have family, they have friends, they have health, and that's what it's all about. So, and um, butterflies. And butterflies. Most of these places, as well as, as, well as um, staying in business and selling them to butterfly houses and conservatories like ours, they also um, have a conservation mission. So they raise these and sell them to us, but at least 10%, sometimes it's more, it depends on the country, the province, the area, um, they donate back or release into nature 10% um, of their inventory to keep the nature, keep everything balanced. See, that's only box one. All of these, <laughs> box one. And box two, box which two I'll get done uh, a little later. I'm gonna leave this here right now. These species right here. And remember um, that uh, you know all of this obtained is because we have the correct permits to do all this stuff, the fish and wildlife permit, also the USDA permit, which is like that thick. Um, you know, these guys are inspected before they enter the United States um, and go through uh, rigorous uh, paperwork in order to get facilities like us to be able to fly all this beautiful stuff that we do. So I'll open that box a little later. We'll get this all pinned first. We hope you have a great day. Stay healthy, stay safe, wash your hands. Make sure you go to the Butterfly Farmers uh, donate page. Please share it with your friends. This has to continue. This is not free. This is all paid for. So we need to keep these people um, uh, funded so if you can share it and spread it with your friends, we appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Until later, stay safe, people. Yeah. <clears throat>